What the president made clear is that we have uh, in concerns about a potential military operation in Rafah. I don't think that's any secret. We've been making those concerns known publicly, and we have made those concerns quite clear to the government of Israel. And as the president noted, um, there are certain types of military assistance that uh, we uh, will not make available to Israel for use in a campaign in Rafah. Now, United Kingdom. You Poor Ollie. have received... Zero points. Oh, that is brutal. Next up, Next Israel. Now, don't be surprised if this is an enormous number. I think this is going to be a huge, huge televote number. I don't know if you were watching the Eurovision drama last night. It triggered uh, plenty of controversies across uh, the Europe, um, and we saw plenty of drama. Um, you know, in the last few days, just before the final was to be held in Sweden on um, uh, Saturday night. In the end, Switzerland won, but there are questions that the organizers were trying their best. That's exactly what people are suspecting. And the questions are being raised on the intention of the organizer to make uh, Israeli contestant a winner and there were several developments in the period leading up to the final that prompt people to raise those questions and it will be incumbent upon the organizer to come clean on that. What were those developments? So there was a controversy surrounding the Israeli contestant. First of all, it has never made sense to me as to why Israel is part of something which entails countries from around Europe. Israel is not in Europe. So why is it part of Eurovision? Nobody knows that. And if you read the uh, justification, it will make you laugh. I mean, they have looked, they have created an imaginary map of Europe based on the radio frequency. The organizer, which is European Broadcasting Union to make sure that Israel is included in, uh, in Eurovision. So the idea was to include their masters or in some cases the illegitimate child to be part of Eurovision. So they came up with this justification. So that's fine. That's one. So there was a controversy surrounding Eden Golan, who is the contestant from Israel. Because Eden Golan's original song was revolving around what happened on 7th of October. So it dawned upon the organizers that uh, the contestants should not make any political statement through their songs. So they asked Eden Golan to go and change her songs. So that 7th of October songs became hurricane and they had to do a lot of back and forth editing and changing the wording. And finally, uh, this was her entry. Now that aside, there was a controversy that why Israeli contestants should be allowed to go ahead with, with, the, with her participation when her country is committing genocide, has killed officially more than 34,000 people, unofficially more than 100,000 people and counting. As we speak, they are continuing to bomb people in Rafah refugee camp where 1.4 million people have taken refuge and they have, they have nowhere to go. Such is their barbarism that even their protectors, America, have had to ban the supply of weapons to Israel because even America, even America thinks that Israelis cannot be trusted with their weapons because they are killing, they're using those weapons to kill children, babies, women, pregnant ladies, bombing hospitals, destroying hospitals, you know, destroying educational institutions, destroying all the schools. Uh, I'm literally, you know, flattening the whole of Gaza and forcing 2.4 million people to become refugee once again. With respect to the larger question, so what the president made clear is that we have uh, in concerns about a potential military operation in Rafah. I don't think that's any secret. We've been making those concerns known publicly, and we have made those concerns 
quite clear to the government of Israel, and as the president noted, um, there are certain types of military assistance that uh, we uh, will not make available to Israel for use in a campaign in Rafah. That's how bad it is. So the questions were right as to why Israel is being allowed to take part. Because if you look at the history, we don't have to go far as far back as you know what happened to South Africa in the 80s and the 90s. You know the South Africa was banned from international sports for more than 20 years. So South Africa was declared a prior state. I remember that South Africa was only allowed to play cricket internationally in 1991 when they traveled to India. More recently, we know the, how the world reacted to athletes from, uh, from Russia in the wake of uh, you know, Russia-Ukraine war. In England, in England, Wimbledon was so quick to ban Russian uh, player Daniel Medvedev. It did not allow. Number two seed. Number two seed was not allowed to take part in Wimbledon, one of the four um, you know, Grand Slams, because Russia, according to them, had invaded another country, for which Wimbledon was fined by ATP. Russian athletes are still not allowed to use their flags in international track and field events. Olympics are going to happen very soon in Paris, in a few months' time. Russian athletes will not be allowed to, uh, you know, hoist uh, their country's flag. They will, be, uh, they will be taking part under a neutral flag. But then when it comes to, and by the way, when you look at the number of people that were killed in South Africa and the number of people that, are, that have been killed in Ukraine, there's no match. The number of people that Israelis have killed in six months are way more than, way more than the number of people that were killed, you know, the, in about 20 years, uh, 20, in 20 years, uh, um, the period in South Africa and uh, in the last three years in Ukraine. And yet, we continue to reward Israel for their ability to commit genocide. That's a bloody hypocrisy. That's a bloody hypocrisy and double standard of this country, so-called civilized countries like the UK and the USA and the European Union. And Canada, let's not forget it. So that was one bit. So the questions were absolutely right as to why Israel is being allowed to take part in a competition despite that country continuing to break all international laws and showing disregard to international humanitarian laws. Then there was another, I mean, I mean, if you, the series of events that, 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 that took place, that will raise several questions about the intention of the organization. So there was a contestant called Juiced Clean from Netherlands. He was banned. He was kicked out of the competition. Why was he kicked out of the competition? Because he allegedly misbehaved with a certain crew member of the production team. And the organizers have made it clear that the misbehavior was not sexual or physical assault. And yet he was kicked out in defiance of the principle of natural justice that you are not, you are innocent until proven guilty. But in his case, he was kicked out. Now what happens? He was kicked out immediately after this development took place. A personal question. Have you ever thought that by being here, you bring risk and danger for other participants and public? In what way? Sorry. You don't have to answer that question if you want, don't want to. Why not? If you want to, if you want to answer, please. So you saw the press conference in which Israeli contestant was asked about a question about her country's conduct in Gaza. So organizers chipped in and said, look, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. To which Juice Clean, who is a rapper from Netherlands, said, why not? Why are you giving special treatment to Israeli contestant? And immediately after that, he was kicked out of the competition on completely different ground. Now, it's up to you whether you want to believe that uh, the justification. 
that organizers are saying that he, he didn't sexually harass anybody. He didn't physically assault anybody. This is not me. Organizers are saying that. So just because of his imaginary misbehavior with a member of the production team, he had to be kicked out of the competition. And they want you to believe that it has nothing to do with his comments about Israeli contestant in that press conference. That's number two. Let's go on to the British contestant. So the British contestant was Ollie Alexander. Mind you, Ollie Alexander was one of those nine contestants before the competition who had signed, who had signed a petition calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. You know, 34,000 people have officially been killed, more than 100,000 people unofficially killed. And if one individual calls for an immediate ceasefire, how, what would you think of that individual? A sane person who doesn't want any more in innocent people being killed. But then in his case, he was punished. There were many people from his own country who called for his replacement. Why? Because how dare you say that innocent people should not be killed? That's not what we stand for in the UK. UK being civilized means that we love killing people for fun. We love helping a regime kill people for fun. That's what our history says and we haven't changed. So that this guy became a villain of sorts since then. Now yesterday when they in the final he got about 48 votes. 48 votes from the member countries. But then he got zero vote from his own country. There are 65 million people in his own country and the organizers would want you to believe that out of those 65 million people, nobody, nobody voted for Ali Alexander. And mind you, it's the same country where more than 65% people have have said that they don't want war to continue. They want ceasefire. They are in favor of ceasefire. So 65 to 70 percent of that 65 million population want ceasefire. Ali Alexander wants ceasefire and yet the organizers would tell you that he did not receive a single vote from the members of public. Yes. Okay, good luck Ali. Now United Kingdom. Poor Ollie. Have received zero points. Oh, that is brutal. And then Israel. So Israel from the member countries. So Israeli contestant. She was booed during the rehearsal. She was booed during semi-final. She was booed during the final performance. Such was her popularity that from the 25 member countries, she got just 52 votes. There were countries who did not even give her any vote. So out of 25 countries, she got just 52 votes. But when it comes to public voting, she beats everybody else and suddenly she becomes the top contestant. And guess what? The BBC's presenter Graham Norton, who was not even in privy to the number of votes, he already predicted even before the two main presenters could announce the votes, he said that she's going to get a lot of votes. Next up, Israel. Now, don't be surprised if this is an enormous number. I think this is going to be a huge, huge televote number. Will it be enough to overtake Switzerland? Next, next we have Israel. You have received three hundred and twenty three points. As expected, it's a very big number for Israel. Seems that we have a new leader. And they want you to believe that no, it's not fixed. How, how did Graham Norton know that she's going to get lots of votes? What were the indications? Was booing the indication? Was the fact that none of the member countries voted for her? Was that the indication that suddenly, you know, the people in those countries will vote for her? Or were, was he convinced that the people from Israel would be enough 
to take a number of votes to 300 plus. But people from UK wouldn't be enough. Their number of votes will be zero for Ali Alexander. I mean, how can you be so brazen? That's a question that is being asked. And that's a question that, you know, the organizers need to answer. It's not surprising that the war criminal Netanyahu himself was rooting for uh, Eden Golan to win. He had thrown all his weight behind her victory. He was tweeting pro uh, pro profusely. He was releasing a video message in support of her. Clearly, the entire Israeli resources were used to make sure that she wins. And yet she did not win. So I tweeted in response to uh, that war criminal uh, Benjamin Netanyahu that even your blood money was not enough to make her a winner. So these were the questions that the organizers must answer. I don't know if you observed that as well, but I certainly did. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.